everybody. Uh, I'm Sasha Kostovic. I'm the director of uh, AA Labs, which is the research division of Company Audio Analytics. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining this, uh, this tech talk tonight or for watching it online. Uh, we are recording these tech talks. Uh, you can find them on our website, www.audioanalytics.com. Uh, and uh, there you will have uh, links to the whole series. Tonight is the seventh one. We're really, really happy to see that the attendance is, uh, is growing uh, more and more and to see so much interest for uh, machine learning applied to audio processing and sound recognition uh, in general. Uh, tonight, um, our speaker uh, comes from the, uh, from the academia, from the University of Surrey. Um, so uh, this, this is going to be a very interesting talk. So last uh, week we were, uh, the whole team of Audianetic, we were at the DK's challenge, which is uh, a data challenge. So uh, it's uh, the kind of uh, task where uh, the organizers of the challenge give the same data set to uh, a bunch of labs or participating labs, either uh, academic ones or, um, or uh, industrial ones. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and um, no, that's fine. We just cut the, the kind of <laughs> uh, So yes, uh, DK's data challenge is uh, one of these challenges, which is uh, which is uh, really good to kind of create, foster new ideas uh, in the in the domain of uh, machine learning applied to sound recognition. Uh, and um, so, bon, as a research lab, industrial lab, we always track all these things. We have uh, obviously our own. Uh, innovation, but we need to stay in sync with the, the rest of the world. And it was really interesting to see uh, uh, what kind of systems were presented this year uh, in the DKS challenge. Uh, they, there seems to be a wave of uh, neural networks coming, so we've all uh, probably read about uh, neural networks. They're getting lots of press, lots of enthusiasm, perhaps lots of hype as well, rightly or wrongly. Uh, but uh, undeniably, neural networks are, uh, are kind of uh, uh, pervading now the, the research in uh, many different fields of artificial intelligence, from image recognition to speech recognition to various signal processing tasks. Uh, and sound recognition uh, is also one of these tasks where uh, uh, neural networks are uh, evolving and uh, having uh, more and more kind of uh, visible and, and bullish presence. Uh, so, um, I'm talking about the DK's challenge because uh, the, the system that our speaker uh, is going to present tonight uh, has uh, ranked first at the task 4 of the DK's challenge. Task 4 uh, was the uh, recognition, uh, sound recognition for uh, smart cars, was presented as sound recognition for smart cars. Uh, and uh, so, I think what the system uh, so is going to talk about more of his experience with neural networks in various fields and so on. But what uh, this winning system of DKs was uh, showing is a kind of uh, next generation of neural networks thems themselves. It used to be that neural networks used to be uh, isolated architectures. You had the feed-forward one, and then you had the recursive one, and then the convolutive, which were sort of considered individually as tools to solve a variety of problems. So convolution for uh, image processing, uh, recursive networks for some form of temporal modeling, and so on. And the system you're going to see today, uh, that, that our speaker is going to, to present, uh, illustrates a kind of new way of thinking where uh, different uh, forms of different flavors of neural networks are being uh, picked and mixed to achieve some higher level of modeling of sound. So that's why uh, we're really, really happy to have uh, the speaker tonight uh, presenting that kind of system. Please give a big welcome to Dr. Yong Chu from University of Surrey. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sasha, for your kind introduction. Thank you all for attending this talk. Uh, I'm Yong Xu. Uh, just to start, I want to give a bit of my background. Uh, I graduated from University of Science and Technology of China in 2015. And uh, uh, before that, I spent some time in Georgia Tech with a work with Professor Qin Huili. Uh, and uh, after my PhD graduation, I worked in iFlight Tech. Uh, it's a speech company in China. I worked on for the far field of speech recognition. And now, I'm work, uh, working in University of Surrey in Guildford as a postdoctor. And, uh, and today the talk will cover two topics, one speech and uh, another sound. And Sasha said, sound is not speech. That means uh, some different. So speech, as you all know, uh, it uh, consists of uh, imaged phonemes. Maybe you have some transition score or language modeling among different phonemes or words. And sound, uh, in our real world, there's a uh, huge number of classes uh, like a baby cry, glass break, 
or a shunk, uh, machine gun, and uh, but the taxonomy uh, or the transi transition among these uh, acoustic events is not clear. So this is the uh, afterline for today's uh, talk, and two parts. One is uh, deep learning based speech enhancement, which try to remove noise, noise and or environmental sound from speech, and another part is a uh, deep learning based sound classification. It's uh, on the other side. I mean, try to keep or recognize uh, no noise uh, or environmental sound. It seems they are two uh, opposite tasks, right? But uh, the key, the, the key uh, thing is is the same. That is how to model the noise or environmental sound. And uh, today I will mainly focus for the the second task, second task, which is uh, much more rel related to audio analytic. But uh, I also want to introduce the first task that is speech enhancement because I'm just uh, thinking I'll try to discuss with you about whether we can use the same method for the sound enhancement. That is, if our target is not speech, it's baby cry, can we do the, use the same method for baby cry enhancement? So let's start with uh, uh, deep learning for the speech enhancement. So uh, just give, maybe you already know, so just give you a bit uh, uh, idea of what is speech enhancement. Uh, speech enhancement is try to uh, extract some clean speech from the noisy mix, uh, noisy speech. Uh, there's some difficult things. One is uh, when like this, it's a no SNR case minus five dB here. Uh, it's quite difficult to to extract clean speech from that. Another thing is uh, non stationary noise like uh, gunshot. It's because it's a fast changing, and uh, it's uh, difficult to track the, the non stationary noise. So there are two goals. One is uh, quality. Quality always focus for the uh, details, like uh, high frequency details and the speaker information, who is speaking. And intelligibility is uh, another thing. It uh, always focus for the content, and you should understand the, what, the speech, what the speech is talking about. And it's very important for the devi developing uh, hearing aid devices. So, in fact, uh, uh, for this work, I have, this is, work is my PhD work. So it's, I, it has five parts, but today, uh, I just want to cover the first the two, the basic uh, methods and uh, how to generalize to unseen noise type. Just to give you a bit of idea and uh, also try to discuss or think about whether we can use the same method for sound event enhancement, like a baby cry enhancement. So other two parts I will skip. Um, so the motivation is, is uh, like this. Um, as you know, in, our, in, the, in the real world, for the noise, we, the many have two different types of noise. One is uh, additive noise, which I focus here. Another one is um, convolutional noise, like a wrong impulse response a reflection from the wall. And uh, here, we only focus on the additive noise. That means uh, in the time domain or the complex spectral domain, uh, the mixture signal Y is equal to the clean speech X plus uh, noise N. So we also, according to this additive model, to constructing some pair data because we want to train on DN, so we should have pair data. Suppose we have a clean data, we use TIMIT. It's a very common, very popular uh, speech recognition uh, corpus, uh, four hours clean speech data. And suppose we have a pure noise, just a noise, no speech. And then we, uh, according to this entity model, we can, we can mix them together and the different uh, SNRs. Like if we want to minus five dB, if we want to 10 dB, we can uh, mix them together. According to, uh, and then the basic idea is very, very simple, just using a DN as a black box. And you learn the mapping function from the noisy signal to the clean signal. Yes, uh, compared with the traditional methods, uh, I think the big advantage is that um, they, there's nearly low assumption here. You just learn the relationship between, because the relationship between the noisy speech and the clean speech is quite uh, nonlinear and very difficult, uh, very complicated. So this is a basic uh, framework. Uh, we, we have, because we already con constructed uh, lots of uh, pair data, that means uh, noisy data, clean data, and then we can extract some features. We, uh, we, <coughs> we extract some uh, log power spectral features. It's, a, uh, it's a after FFT, and then you, uh, you, you uh, lo do a lo lo log and uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and then you can get to the log power spectrum. And uh, your input to the DN is the noisy log power spectrum. And uh, your output, uh, your training uh, target is the clean log power spectrum. 
and all the features are normalized. It's a global var uh, variance um, uh, unit and the mean zero normalized. So, so then we use a mean square error to train this model. Um, uh, for the enhancement stage, uh, you just you only have the noisy uh, samples. You only have noisy. You can train the noisy log power spectral, and then with the well trained uh, deep neural network, and then you can have an estimation of the clean log power spectral. And then we use the noisy phase. There's no uh, processing about the phase because phase is very difficult to estimate. And also, uh, phase did uh, have much influence on the final quality. So you can use a, a, a classical overlap and method to do a waveform reconstruction. And the DN training, uh, you can use pre-training like a restricted uh, bell by machine based uh, pre-training, or you can use uh, autoencode uh, pre-training, and then you have fine tuning. Fine tuning always very more important than the pre-training if you have much more data. Um, and problem here is that, uh, you know, all supervised but have, have a big problem, big uh, issue is how to generalize. Here is a big issue is how to generalize for unseen noise types. For example, if we just train a model in the office, or can we use it in a, uh, in a cafe room, a cafeteria room, in a restaurant? Uh, the answer is no. So how to generalize the model for unseen noise type is a big issue. So we, f we figure out some methods. So as one naive method is, if we want to generate for unseen noise type, how about we collect lots of different noise type? So it's a naive way, but it works very well. And uh, lots of people have demonstrated that it's very important. It's just like a speech recognition system now. Uh, you, have, you collect lots of uh, data from the, from the user's cell phone, and then you can do a multi-conditional training, just like that. So another uh, strategy is uh, called noise aware training. It's also used in uh, speech recognition system, especially for the noise robust speech recognition system. Uh, a simple noise aware training is do like that. For example, you have a recording of a, of a noise speech. Uh, you suppose uh, the first uh, eight frames, for example, 10 frame or six frame, is just noise without speech. So you have a basic estimate. You can just ask the average, the first, uh, for example, six uh, frames together and get a uh, basic idea of how the lo uh, noise looks like uh, along the uh, arteries. But this is not uh, right because the noise may be changed uh, along the arteries. So we, later on, we uh, propose another, uh, uh, I think a better method is what we call dynamic noise over training. That means we have, a method, we have a, another deep neural network to estimate the, the noise frame by frame. And then we can aware the second neural network I mean, to better for better speech enhancement. So uh, the third thing is uh, it's easy dropout, uh, but the dropout is also very important because it to uh, introduce some uh, stochastic disturbance uh, on the hidden layers, and uh, it can make the mm, model more robust and avoid some overfitting problem. And uh, the first thing is uh, we find that uh, uh, for the, this DM based speech enhancement, they have a uh, uh, a severe problem we call the over smoothing problem. I mean, reflect on the enhancement speech. You can you can clearly see that the, spe the estimated spectrogram of the clean speech uh, is over smoothed, and uh, and and then we uh, we propose uh, like a, a global variance equalization method. Uh, but today I will not go to the details of the data uh, of the techniques, just to give you a basic idea and about the this, this uh, DM based speech enhancement. And uh, and uh, this is a uh, this is a here are uh, one hundred and four noise types. Um, I think it's uh, quite uh, interesting because, um, for example, in speech recognition, you may use multi condition training, but you never care about what kinds of noise you have collected in your training data set. But here we we clearly see that the noise has its own, own patterns, and we use um, these 104 noise types to mix with the clean speech, and finally we can get up to 100 hours uh, data pair, and then we can use this large data to train our deep neural network. So here are uh, 104 noise types, uh, and a bit of uh, thinking about, uh, sometimes I think 
uh, noise uh, uh, is more, sometimes noise can have more complicated uh, patterns. Uh, and uh, maybe in the future, we need more research effort to explore, like whether we can, uh, did, we can construct some noise dictionary, just like uh, the words in, Eng in English, or whether we can um, construct some um, noise taxonomy, something like that. So, okay, so that's the basic idea of the DVM-based speech enhancement. But finally, I want to give a very, very interesting demo. Uh, this noise speech is attracted from the famous uh, film, Forest Gum, and it's, this feature is pronounced by Tom Hanks. And uh, you know, the difficulty here is that everything is unknown. Everything, because our DM neural network is trained using image data and uh, 104 uh, noise types. But here, because it's, it's, it's a real world noisy speech, uh, unknown noise, unknown speaker, unknown channel, unknown uh, content. So let's, let's, let's hear it. So this is a noisy. So you can hear the non social noise in the beginning. And this is um, uh, enhanced by a, a famous traditional method called the log mean square error. I remember the bus ride on the first day of school very well. So, so you can still hear some uh, radio noise there. That's because um, for traditional methods, uh, it's very difficult to track the non social noise. And uh, that's uh, inaccurate to estimate the noise. So that is what we deep neural network method did. I remember the bus ride on the first day of school very well. So it can successfully uh, remove the long section noise. It, uh, although the, some of the long section noise is not, uh, uh, not trained or, or unseen in the, in, the, in the deep neural network, but they still, there's still, still some similar patterns. I mean, uh, have, uh, used in the deep neural network. But, we, but for this uh, noisy speech, there's uh, no, I mean, everything is unknowing. So that's all for, uh, for, for this um, task. And this is the source code. And we also released uh, our models and decoding training, uh, training codes using GPU code. And everything is here. So everyone can use uh, this model just to cite my papers. <laughs> and uh, a bit of uh, thinking about whether we can use uh, the same method for sound, um, sound enhancement, which is much, may, maybe much more related to audio analytics. That's why I introduced this work today. Uh, so a bit of, uh, one thing is uh, sound event enhancement. For example, for speech enhancement, we the target is speech. And here, even if we can change the target from speech to baby cry, maybe, uh, and then we use the sim similar method. We, we collect uh, some noise, different kinds of noise, and then the baby cry is the clean target and then we mix them together. Because in the real world, when you are recording a baby crime, it always has some background noise, uh, like uh, human speech, then something like that, or music. And uh, another thing is uh, sound event uh, derivation. They also have some uh, speech der derivation work based on deep neural network. Maybe uh, non short memory should be work much better. But uh, the idea is uh, similar, because um, for in the real world, if you're recording a sound, Always, if, for example, you're recording a song in a living room or, or in a kitchen or in a lecture room, uh, always have some reversion and the wrong impulse response. Um, they have a huge uh, influence on the accuracy of the recogni uh, rec recognizer. So um, maybe you can also do the same thing. And more important, I think, in the future, because uh, in the, no matter in the speech community or the, in the uh, sound community, I think cocktail party is a very important uh, uh, scenario because I suppose you have lots of people talking and uh, lots of music, and lots of uh, noise there. How a human can, is, uh, can do it very well. I mean, can concentrate to the speaker, wh which I, who I can, I am interested in. And uh, but for machine, it's very difficult to concentrate on the uh, specific uh, sound or specific speech. So, from my from my thinking, I think um, uh, in the near future maybe we should not only recognize speech we should also recognize sound and noise type because uh, with, with, if you know the speech or the sound and then you can have better understanding of your acoustic, uh, your surrounding acoustic environment and then you can pick up the more interested, uh, I mean, speaker, uh, speech or, uh, or, or sound. So that's a bit of an uh, idea for the future. So 
Let's move to the second part, uh, deep learning for sound classification, which I have done in uh, University of Surrey in Guildford. Uh, that our project is called uh, Making Sense of Sounds. It's a joint project with the uh, University of Suffolk in Manchester. So this project is led by Professor Mark Plumbley, is my supervisor. Uh, we have four work packages. Uh, work package one, which I focus for machine learning and signal processing. And the work package two, to some multimodality things like uh, audio visual uh, processing or using GAN to generate an uh, image or using GAN to generate to generate uh, to using GAN from audio to generate an uh, image, something like that, uh, called uh, audio visualization. And the work package three is done uh, by University of Stanford. They uh, they try to construct some sound taxonomy, which is uh, uh, from human perception uh, side. So work package four is for demonstration. So uh, before I go to the tech list, I want to bring good news. Also, Sasha already mentioned that we uh, there's a challenge. We won the challenge. Uh, the challenge is called the detection and the classification of acoustic uh, scene and events. There's a uh, four task. We focus on the, uh, the, the task four, the large scale weekly supervised sound event, sound event detection for smart cars. We think it's a, a bit uh, challenging, so we are exciting for more challenging things. So uh, it's organized by uh, this. Uh, and the way uh, we, we won the first uh, place uh, among like, uh, 33 systems, I think. Um, and OK, so let's give a bit of uh, background. So, what is uh, sound classification? Um, so suppose you have a recording, and uh, it's always non-speech, uh, non-music. Uh, and it may be a multi-label problem. Uh, what is multi-label? Suppose you have uh, several labels. I mean, several events happen happening uh, along the, the same recording. Uh, maybe a multi-class problem, like a scene classification. Just uh, tell me where you are in your cup. Uh, uh, no, in, in a pub or in a restaurant, in a living room, something like that. And, uh, and also, um, they have already three decades challenge. Uh, decades, decades in 2013, 16, and 17 this year. And uh, maybe decades uh, 20, uh, 18 in University of Surrey. Uh, uh, so, and also, uh, Google just released a, a, a large data set called the Audio Set in iCasp this year. And a lot of applications. Although the, I think the, uh, the sound classification is a new area, uh, because people, in the previous time, people always focus for speech, speech or music. Uh, but uh, but uh, there's also lots of applications for sound classification. For example, uh, for safe driving cars, uh, I think the, most of the latest uh, techniques uh, for safe driving cars, they only use image segmentation with the human, with the road, with the uh, uh, car. But, uh, but I can tell you one example, uh, which sound is also very important. For example, in UK, if you hear, when you're driving a car, when you hear uh, uh, ambulance uh, uh, sound uh, alarm uh, behind you, maybe 10 meters far from you, and, uh, or maybe around a corner, your camera cannot de detect the ambulance car, right? But uh, your microphone can well, I mean, can detect that there's an uh, ambulance car there. So you should take some actions, because there's an ambulance car behind you. You should uh, reduce your speed and move the car a bit to the the roadside, so right? So that's one, uh, and the other smart home, you can detect the baby cry, baby, you can detect the, uh, and the alarm, and the public surveillance, uh, you can detect the gunshot, uh, so you can quickly tell the police to come here, that something happened. So it's, it's very useful in, in real world. And uh, uh, from the decades challenge, there's um, defi already defined uh, like a five task now here, one is the uh, scene classification. That is, um, tell me, just uh, give you uh, like a 10 second uh, sound recording and just tell me where you are. Are you in a pub or in a park or a residential area or in a restaurant? And alarm detection, that is uh, also like a, a 10 second recording and uh, to detect whether they have uh, anomaly uh, things happen, like a baby cry or gunshot. Um, also, third is the audio tanking. The audio tanking means Mm. There maybe have uh, several events happen in 10 seconds. You can tell me all the happening e events. And uh, the, fifth, the fourth is a strongly labeled sound event detection. What it means strongly? Strongly means um, uh, you already, I already, for your training set, I already give you frame level labels. Each frame, you know what happened under this frame. So that means, in your training set, so that it means strongly labeled. It's, it's human labeled. 
So you can train uh, accurate DM model to predict the events and each frame in your testing set. And, and the, the final uh, task is which we which we, done, uh, which we did in DK Challenger is weekly labeled some event detection. That means I didn't give you, uh, for, for your training set, I didn't give you uh, the frame level labels. I just give you an uh, utterance label, like 10 seconds. I just give you, in this 10 seconds, there's some uh, baby cry and there's some, uh, some dog, sound, dog, dog barking, but I didn't tell you where is the baby cry uh, happen and where is the dog barking happen. But in your testing set, you not only need to predict what happened in the 10 seconds, but you also tell me where the baby cry happened. So, so that will make the task more, a bit more challenging, I mean, because it's a weekly labeled. So, uh, so let's start from, uh, from my previous work. Uh, this work uh, which I have done for DKS last year, not this year, is for the sync classification. The sync classification means uh, Tell me where you are, uh, in your office, or in your, uh, in your restaurant, or in your park. So uh, th this, uh, this method we call the hierarchical learning. So what is hierarchical learning? So in, in, the, in this task, uh, they have 15 classes, like a bus, a car, home, library, a park, or a beach. And uh, in fact, we can divide the, the 15, uh, 15 classes into three high-level classes like uh, vehicle, indoor, uh, and outdoor. So we have uh, two two hierarchical structure uh, like high-level classes three and uh, uh, low-level fifteen classes. So it's like a simple taxonomy, right? So how can we use um, this simple taxonomy to train our machine learning model? So so that's why in our project uh, there are one group from Salesforce they try to construct some taxonomy from the human understanding. And then I think it can be beneficial for our uh, machine learning group to do some more work on based on that. So how can do you use, use it? So we have two ways to use this taxonomy information. One is um, hierarchical pre-training, another is uh, multi-level objective learning. It's, it's uh, similar to the multi-task learning. So the, for the hierarchical pre-training, uh, the idea is uh, like this. Uh, you have DN, uh, you, you sh in, a, in the beginning, you can train a deep neural network to predict the three high-level classes like uh, indoor, outdoor, and vehicle. Uh, didn't uh, predict the, the 15 detailed classes. So uh, that means um, like a human, we always try to learn some easier things and then we try to learn based on the experience from, uh, from the learning of the easier things and then we can move to the a bit harder things. So it's like, a, uh, like, it's like, like this and then we can use the uh, the DN, the, 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 we use the weights already trained by the DN, DN1, I mean, I to initialize the weights of DN2, and then we can move to a bit to tr predict the, the, 15 class, the, the 15 detailed classes or the target classes. So we can also a bit, to do a bit more work, that is, um, uh, that is uh, we, can, we can move to DN3. DN3, we not only I mean, it's like a uh, joint training, uh, jo joint training to predict, jointly predict the, the, the 15 low level classes and also um, predict, predict the three high level classes. And in, if you want to do that, uh, we should uh, to modify the loss function a bit. And so it's uh, just like a uh, uh, much task learning. Uh, yes, and uh, let's, uh, let's, let's look into some of the results. This is uh, 15 classes. Uh, this is the, the 15 scenes in uh, the park, uh, in a restaurant, uh, in, a, uh, in a pub, something like that. Uh, we can see that uh, some, uh, this is a computer matrix. Uh, so we can uh, clearly see that uh, there are some confusion pairs uh, which is difficult to, to distinguish, like uh, uh, especially the, the park and the residential area. Because, um, because uh, like uh, you, there's a bird scene in, in park or in a uh, park, or maybe there's also a uh, bird scene in res residential area. And home and library is also difficult to distinguish. And the cafe and the grocery store, uh, I heard about that is a lot because of lots of uh, people talking in both places. So uh, another work is um, we move uh, to the audio tanking. And uh, we try to use an unsupervised uh, uh, feature learning. So, uh, what is uh, 
Uh, so why, why we want to do like this? So let's have, have, a, have a listen. Uh, this is a recording from the G case change last year, task four, audio tanking task. So it's labeled uh, as child speech and uh, female speech and TV, TV sound. Whether that's female speech. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, why we want to do our unsupervised feature learning? Because uh, we can clearly hear that there's some uh, lots of random background noise. I mean, uh, apart, apart from the child speech and uh, TV sound, the female speech. Um, and this uh, random background noise should be smooth. And uh, the second motivation is that we want to, to, to build some uh, compound, re re compound representation of the uh, context uh, information. So the, the idea is to uh, try to use a uh, delosing auto-encode um, to, uh, to first do, to do, like, to do reconstruct uh, the feature and then use the bottleneck uh, feature to uh, to to retrain the different to, to retrain the different neural network based classifier, so so this here is a uh, 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 reconstructed uh, male-fed banks. Uh, the bottom figure is the original male-fed bank, and the up figure is the reconstructed figure. We can see that uh, um, some of the background noise is is smoothed, um, and uh, and okay okay let's move to. Uh, Another, uh, an, another, a bit more complicated structure. I mean, for the same task, audio tanking indicator challenge, um, we use a convolutional recurrent neural network. Mm, why we use a convolutional uh, neural in, in the front layers? Uh, because we think um, it's a bit of different uh, for sound classification from uh, speech recognition. Um, it, but the sound classification is, is, uh, is more like similar to the image image classification. So. Uh, because you already seen that uh, uh, there's a lot of background noise in the in the in the whole spectrum, and uh, and uh, if you can use a uh, convolutional neural in the front, because the convolutional neural network has the pooling strategy. The pooling means you can uh, pick the um, pick the most impo impo important uh, information and uh, remove or suppress the some of the background noise. So and the gate the recurrent neural network is uh, one kind of recurrent neural network with some gates. Uh, um, and uh, it can model the long-term long pattern of the, au of the audio pattern. And uh, then, then it's followed by a uh, one-layer uh, deep neural network. And, and finally, it's the, uh, the classification, classification layer, the sigmoid, uh, as the activation function. So, and based on the, the convolutional neural network structure, uh, we finally find a very interesting um, uh, method for the audio tanking. Or and we call it uh, attention. Uh, attention, uh, what, what that mean? Um, here we introduce um, two additional modules here. Uh, one is um, soft box localization, another one is a three model attention. Uh, they are similar, they are all attention. But what do we, why we want to introduce the attention model here? Because uh, suppose we have 10 seconds of sound, right? And uh, uh, if, you, if, if there's a baby cry and the dog barking there, um, and uh, all, all the other parts uh, are all bank random background noise. So you try to learn some attention values. That means uh, first you have a global at uh, attention value. That means it's independent from it, it's a class independent. That means uh, you the learned attention value will tell you uh, whether this this frame is important, uh, whether this frame is not important. So important means uh, there's a target e event happen and certain frames. Uh, not important. That means that's just a background noise. It's nothing to do. It's not 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 related to. It's not related to the target events. So, if it's an uh, important frame, that means the uh, because sigmoid is uh, the value of sigmoid is uh, between zero and one. So if if it's important, the sigma, the learned uh, attention value will be uh, approximate to one. And it's not important, and the attention value maybe uh, maybe uh, approximate to zero. So so. In this way, it can control the the information flow from the uh, from from the front layer to the final output layer, and we also have a, a, a localization factor vector. It, it is a bit uh, it's it's a similar. It's it's still uh, attention 
uh, strategy, but it's a, it is a class, uh, class dependent. That only means it's, if there's 10 seconds, there's a baby cry and uh, there's dog barking, but the dog barking and the uh, baby cry happen in different uh, frames, right? So for baby cry, you should have a, a attention uh, value to detect where the baby cry happen. And for the dog barking, because it's uh, happened different uh, frames, so you should have a different attention values uh, to detect where the, the, the dog barking happen. So, so in for, so in this way, uh, uh, the attention factor uh, uh, is well. First, is the uh, class independent attention factor is defined like this. It's a, it's because it's a class independent. So uh, it. So, so it's no difference uh, between, uh, there's no difference uh, among different uh, classes. It's just to uh, tell you whether this frame is important or not. If not, it may be the attention value is approximate to zero, otherwise approximate to, to one. And then you can multiply with the uh, uh, CN output and each frame. So, and another uh, attention uh, vector, we call this localization vector because it's a class uh, dependent. Uh, we, 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 because the class, class, it's a class dependent, so it's a, the size is similar, it's the same with the, the final class number. And they will also uh, mu multiply with the class classification output. And uh, to get to the final output, uh, we, we normalize um, by, by like a, a average, uh, average weighting uh, to, for the classification output score. Uh, and uh, here is an um, example. Uh, uh, oh, and another thing is uh, very important to note that to be noted that it's the for this task and um, for this audio tanking task, um, you only know the utterance level labels and no frame level labels. So you can only train uh, on frame level uh, on utterance level loss loss. You cannot train uh, on frame level loss. So here's an example. Mm, we can hear the what is happening in this recording. So uh, this, uh, this recording is um, uh, labeled as uh, percussive sound and uh, child speech. Just to tell you there's a child speech or per percussive sound there, but it didn't tell you uh, your, uh, or the, the temporal locations of these events. So for the, train, for the testing set, for the testing utterance, you don't, uh, you don't only need to uh, predict uh, what happened in this uh, 10 seconds, you should also uh, predict the locations, the temporal location of, for each event. So we can see that, um, for example, the, the, the middle figure, the dot, the purple line, it's the percussive sound. So it's, it's a, the, peak, the peak means uh, there's some percussive sound happens there. And uh, the, the solid uh, blue line, uh, it, it indicated that there's some child speech uh, happens there. So, that means this attention um, strategy can successfully detect uh, uh, the temporal locations for each event. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the basic uh, experimental setup. Uh, we can start the experiments on uh, Dickens' uh, challenge last year, audio tanking task. They have seven, uh, seven events, uh, child speech, uh, female speech, and uh, we just compared, we already presented the method uh, that you know the on the code and the basic convolutional uh, recording URL and the attention method. We can clearly see that um, our attention method can get a much better uh, performance. So, so let's move to uh, more exciting uh, experiments. Uh, we, for DKS this year, task for large scale weekly supervised sound event detection for smart cars. Um, uh, we win the we won the first uh, place for uh, in this task and uh, for this data set it's a subset of a Google audio set I uh, have uh, 50 uh, subset recordings 10 second long length for each and uh, there are 17 classes in total two two main classes are warning warning sounds uh, and the vehicle sounds and uh, they have two subtasks uh, audio tanking audio tanking means you just tell me wh what happened uh, in this uh, in this 10 second sound but without to tell me where, where's the temporal locations. But to the weekly supervised sound event detection means uh, tell me uh, in your training set there's no uh, frame level labels, but uh, in the testing you should uh, tell me where uh, that event happens. So, 
And uh, for measures, you can use F score um, for all the tanking and the uh, segment based error rate for uh, some event detection. So, this is uh, our framework of the reading system. Um, we still use a convolutional recurrent neural network and still use our attention me method, but uh, we change a bit uh, to adapt to the, the new task. We use um, a gated convolutional neural network block uh, in the front. Um, what is a gated uh, a convolutional neural network? Uh, normally, you have a convolutional neural network and uh, you have an uh, activation function, maybe a ReLU uh, or maybe Sigmoid, something like that. But here, we, we, we did, don't, didn't use the ReLU uh, uh, activation function. We use two parallel uh, with the same size uh, output uh, convolutional neural network. One is the linear, with the, one is with the linear activation function. Another one is with the sigmoid, uh, uh, sigmoid activation function. And then we multiply them together. Uh, and because the output size is the same, so it's it's like um, it's like um, a local attention because sigmoid uh, is the value of sigmoid is between zero and one. And if if the if the out if the uh, predict the sigmoid output and a certain being maybe a certain time or frequency being uh, is one, then it means this certain frequency being time frequency being is very important, and you should keep information to flow through uh, through the whole uh, system. If the predict the signal value and a certain time frequency being is zero, that means this this information is not important. It's not it's not related to your target uh, events. You can just ignore it, and uh, and uh, we use um, we also use a batch optimization something like that, and uh, we can uh, concatenate several blocks together, and then we use uh, also we use uh, a one layer bidirectional recurrent neural network to learn the temporal. Uh, long-term temporal information because uh, because because this is a weekly supervised. Uh, just to tell you where in you know, the training set, just to tell you what happened in this uh, ten-second utterance in uh, recording, but it didn't tell you the locations. So you should know the context information because the baby cry maybe happened in, fir in the first frame and then the the eight, eight frame, and uh, and uh, for for the uh, for the attention um, we. Keep the localization. Uh, the we we keep the uh, keep the class dependent uh, local lo uh, attention. That means for each class and each frame, we learn uh, attention value, and uh, try to figure out whether this frame uh, is important for the specific class. Uh, if it's uh, it's, it's related, that means the, the value should be approximate to one. Otherwise, it should be approximate to zero. So and then we weight the average them together because your Label is utterance. It is defined in the, on a label level. There's no frame level label, so, so we should uh, average them together uh, to to uh, calculate uh, uh, utterance level loss fun loss, and then back propagate to the whole system to train uh, to update the, the parameters. So, so there are, there are th uh, so there are three key points in our weighting system. I think uh, once uh, we use the gated linear units, uh, uh, it's it's, I think we already compared it's, uh, it's better than the ReLU, normal ReLU function. It's just like this. It's uh, one, one part of a linear output, another part is um, signal output, and they multiply them together. It's like a local attention, or it's uh, like a feature selection screen. We, we noticed that it was quite interesting that uh, uh, Google, uh, just, uh, I think just uh, two months ago, or, uh, they, they, they published, a really published a paper called uh, Google Switch Activation Function. So uh, story is the same, <laughs> so uh, so that means this, this is very important. And this is better. It's a general method. I think you can use anywhere. Uh, so another thing is um, data balancing uh, in a minute batch. That means mm, in this uh, challenge, in this task, uh, you have some ev some events uh, have lots of uh, training samples, and for some events have just uh, several, uh, 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 just a few, uh, just a few uh, training samples. So for a mini batch uh, training mode, you randomly select the samples from the whole data set, right? Uh, you are highly, you are have a highly um, probability to select the high frequency event uh, because it's randomly selected. Um, so, but this is uh, this is not good. Uh, so we try to in, uh, control the situation. We try to reduce uh, the selected samples uh, for the high frequency event and uh, uh, and uh, and. Uh, uh, and increase the selected sample for the low frequency events, so we can like a balance, some balance. 
So attention uh, scheme is, uh, is similar. So just to show our results, uh, that's uh, one example. The bottom figure is the uh, ground truth, uh, and up, up figure is uh, the prediction location. So that means we not only can predict uh, there's a train and a train home in this 10 second address, we can, we can also, but also we can um, predict the locations, uh, which is, uh, sim which is uh, uh, quite similar to the ground truth. Yeah. So this is um, uh, the F1 uh, procedure recall results. Uh, first, we can see that uh, the data balancing in, is important, and then the gauge the uh, activation function is also very important. Uh, finally, Furen, if you want to win a challenge, so Furen always helps. Uh, and uh, and uh, yes, and uh, uh, and this is the output for the uh, for the weekly sound event detection. Sound event detection we always uh, use uh, error rate because error rate is uh, a sum of uh, insertion errors, uh, replacement error, uh, uh, substitute error, and uh, deletion error. Uh, okay. And uh, finally, that's another the final ex experiment is um, uh, Google Audio Set. Uh, Google Audio Set uh, just released the iCast this year. Uh, uh, they have a large number of uh, samples, two million videos. Um, the uh, huge uh, 527 uh, events. Um, but there's some, still have some problem in this uh, Google Audio set. For example, uh, the, you can see the number, the, the samples of the, each class. Uh, for sp music and the speech, it's very common. Uh, uh, you have lots of uh, training samples. But for some uh, events, uh, it's, uh, it's just uh, 100, something like that. But if you want to detect, the, for example, the, the fire alarm, maybe you just have 100. Uh, samples, so it's not enough, um, and uh, because it's a lot of uh, too many uh, videos, so it's um, some of the labels is not accurate. So, but if we, but but anyway, but we still can uh, use this data to to do our uh, audio sound classification. Uh, and another thing is um, uh, because there's some copyright thing uh, problem, so Google released uh, uh, release the uh, like a bottleneck feature not uh, the original feature. If you want to use original feature, you should uh, download all the two million video in your disk. It's terrible. So yeah. So so uh, Google uh, also released the one hundred uh, the bottleneck feature, but it's more, much more compressed. So uh, so we let's see some results. Uh, this is some five hundred twenty seven classes. Mm, uh, the middle one is a Google baseline, and uh, we try different uh, models because. Uh, Google already already give us the very compressed uh, uh, bottleneck feature, so it's the feature is quite good. So we can see that um, if your feature is quite good, like bottleneck feature, sometimes it just use a, a simple deep uh, deep neural network uh, uh, can do a good job, even better than a recurrent neural network sometimes. Um, so okay, so let's let's, uh, let's have some demos. So. It's Final three demos already. Time is going there. So here uh, we use a show. We give a video to show how the attention works. And uh, uh, again, the the label is are uh, defined on the address level, uh, and we don't know the temporal locations. But in the testing set, you not only to predict the uh, the happen the the events, but also it can tell me the temporal locations. So have a look. Uh, Yeah, you can see that um, the attention scheme can uh, can correctly detect the locations like a dot uh, uh, green line. You can see this uh, camp gun, and uh, and then and the f and the last uh, five seconds, you can see there's no camp gun sound, only comes human speech there. Uh, but very interesting thing is that uh, uh, the model can correctly predict the. The, the camp gun uh, and with the high posterior guns with also and the speech, uh, but uh, the labels, I mean, the Google give the labels uh, incorrectly because there's no label for speech, but you can clearly see her the, the speech. So, uh, so that's why I say it's uh, have some noisy uh, labels there in audio set, uh, but maybe some labelers think, think uh, speech is too common. There's no need to, to, to label there. So it's another thing. So. So this is um, uh, another demo for uh, we use the Google 
how to say, train the model to detect some baby cry. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, de de detect where the baby cry happen. Uh, maybe it's not baby cry; it's a girl cry. <laughs> uh. Scarlet, Scarlet, say hi. Say hi to the girl. Yeah. So. Uh, so you can and so this model can and with the attention scheme uh, you can not only predict the happening events but it also can uh, give the uh, temporal locations of the events so the final uh, I don't want to play because uh, to said to say uh, that last Las Vegas uh, shooting there um, but I don't want to play but I just give you a basic idea that uh, we can we can use techniques to improve our public security because we can use uh, the model to detect the gunshot in you know, one second. We can make, you can pretty sure that that's a gunshot. It's just, that's not fireworks. It's a gunshot there. So it can like for inform the policeman come here quickly to this gunshot there. And uh, and uh, another thing I think uh, for uh, for sound sound classification uh, is int very interesting. If you have a microphone array, maybe you can you can detect the the shooter's location. Because the shooter, you don't know where the shooter. But if, but for uh, based if you have a microphone, maybe you can do that. So, uh, so, so okay. This is um, also source code for the winning system. Uh, uh, so let's join the work with Chu Chang Kong there. So take home message. Um, uh, we already introduced two parts as uh, speech enhancement based DVD, and we just give a basic idea. Uh, it's a, I think it's a still a hot research because I can see there's a latest paper but done by other groups. And uh, gen generalization is also very important. Um, and uh, we all, I also can see there's some um, spectral distortion there, especially harmful for SR. How can do, maybe can do joint training or something like that. Uh, and also, uh, I, I, I propose that can we use the same method for sound enhancement, for baby cry enhancement. And the audio classification is a new area. Um, uh, attention works very well for sound detection, and uh, it's very useful in some real-world applications. Okay, that's all from my talk. Thank you. <laughs>